Hello and welcome to a new tutorial coming from MotoCookie.com. My name is Justin and today I'll be showing you how to create a barrel inside Moto uh, 501. Now, this tutorial is going, is going to be aimed at the beginning, the, the users, at the beginner users of, of Moto and I'll be, I'll be, I'll try to go slowly over everything. So we will uh, we will start by modeling the barrel. Then we will do some basic uh, UV mapping for some of the elements, and then we will uh, get and render uh, our precious and beautiful barrel. So um, I'll be I'll try to, to explain as best as I can so that a beginner user can understand what's going on and what I'm doing. But uh, if I forget something, and or if 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 you didn't understand something that I explained, please feel free to comment below the video, and I'll be happy to help. So let's get started. Now, when you create a barrel, what you have to have in mind is the most basic shape that you can start with. So in our case, a barrel is basically a cylinder. So we're going to do just that. We're going to start with a cylinder. So we're going to select the cylinder tool here from the basic tab on the left. And we're going to click and drag in the viewport. So we're going to set the radius here to 350 millimeters on the X and Z. And the sides we're going to set the size to 22 or actually we need a bit more so we're going to set the sides to 28 but what I'm aiming at is to have a flat polygon on the x-axis or the z-axis so maybe 26 okay so looks like 26 gives us a flat polygon right there. I'm just aiming to have that because it will be easier later when we need to modify our barrel. But I'm feeling that we still need more edges, so I'm gonna pick 30. It doesn't really matter. Uh, barrels have different number of edges. Then we can drop the tool and then we're going to extrude this using Shift X. We're going to extrude it up to about that height and now we need to give this a more barrel shape but before we do that I want to make sure that my object is centered to my center so I'm going to go here to center selected and I'm just gonna click all and then I'm going to move it up slightly okay and now we need to add a few edges so I'm going to use loop slice I'm going to select a few polygons in the direction that I want my slice. Alt C, click, and we're going to have some edges. So I want the mode to be uniform. I want the count to be set to 4. And then I'm going to press spacebar to drop the tool. Next, I'm going to move these edges around to help give shape to my barrel. So I'm going to select those two edges, click R, uh, I'm sorry, uh, press R for the scale tool. I'm just going to scale on the Y till I reach that point, maybe even further. Okay, and next I'm going to select these two, R again, and like that. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these edges again. And using the R to the, uh, the scale tool again, I'm just going to scale on the Y and Z on the I'm sorry on the X and Z. Okay, so I'm going to scale about that much. Okay, next I'm going to pick these two, and I'm going to scale again. And now I feel that our barrel is a bit too short. So I'm just going to select 
all those vertices. Now I'm not using right click to select because that only selects the ones that are visible. I'm using the middle mouse button or the wheel button to select those. So I'm going to select those and I'm going to move it up a bit just like that. Okay, and going to add one more edge in here. And make sure you use the center point, and I'm just going to scale it like that. And that's going to be the basic shape of our barrel. So now we need to create the caps of our barrel. So now it's good that we have an edge right in the center because what we can do now is we can delete the bottom part and then create the cap and then mirror this part on the bottom. So we're going to select the top polygon, press B on the keyboard, click, that will activate the tool. We're going to inset until we're happy with the distance. Shift, hold down Shift, click once, that will reactivate the tool, so <clears throat> it will create another bevel, and we're going to push down just just like that. Okay? So now we have the this part done. So we can uh detach this with control X and then control V. And I want to triangulate this. I don't want it to be into a big N gone. So I'm going to triangulate it using Shift T or I can bevel this, drag it like that, then go to vertex and join averaged. But uh, either way it's fine it doesn't really matter okay so now that uh, we did this we can uh, go here and go to duplicate mirror click once we need to select correct axis so we'll select Y and then we're going to move this right until they merge and you can see that happening okay so now this is a solid object again <clears throat> Excuse me. So everything got mirrored on the bottom. And now we're going to add a bit of detail to our barrel. Now the barrel has some rings that go around it to help keep the planks together. So we're going to do that. So rename this to barrel. And now to make sure that the rings that we create are already into position. We're going to copy this using Control C, create a new mesh by pressing N, and paste it using Control V. And I'm just going to hide the barrel. So now we have the exact same copy, and we can use this to create the rings. So I'm going to select these four edges because I want the rings to be just on those edges. I'm going to bevel them. like that. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the polygons that compose these rings. So I select the direction then press L to loop the selection. Repeat the process for the other three rows of polygons and then press the square bracket the, the open square bracket it's right next to the P if you have a US standard keyboard that will invert the selection or you can just go to select and invert and you can see the square bracket okay and click delete uh, click I'm sorry uh, press delete on the keyboard so now we're left with these rings but these rings right now are basically flat polygons with only one side so we're going to add some thickness to them so we're going to go to basic tab thicken click once and then we're going to add some thickness and uh, now we want to add this thickness on the outside rather than the inside because the inside will be inside the barrel and we want to see them so we need to add the thickness on the outside now these will be uh, metal strips so they won't be very thick I'm going to put my thickness to around 4 millimeters and then I'm just going to go and delete the inside 
of the rings because they, the, the inside will not be seen. So I'm going to delete it and then press tab to subdivide the model. And now we can uh, cut this and move it to our barrel layer. So I'm going to press Control X, go to barrel, Control V. And now you're going to see that they're not really uh, matching up. Well, that's because our rings are sub D and the barrel isn't. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to hide the barrel and we're going to we're going to make this these rings a bit sharp. So I'm going to add some loop cuts using the loop slice tool. So I'm going to select the polygons that define the direction. Alt C, press Alt C right there, loop slice. Click once. I'm going to select the count to two and the mode to symmetry. I'm just going to drag until I'm happy with the sharpness of my rings. So I'm going to put it around there. Okay, and I'm going to repeat the process on the next three strips. And that's going to give us a more sharp result. If we toggle off the wireframe, I'm pressing Control 1 here, and toggle off the wireframe, you're going to see that our strips are looking pretty nice. And you can also do that by using shaded or, uh, I'm sorry, um, the viewport, the shade options, wireframe, none. Okay, so I'm going to toggle my wireframe back on. I'm going to unhide my barrel. And let's try to do the same thing to our barrel. So we're going to subdivide it. And now you see that the, the, the barrel matches, but it's a bit not barrel-like. So let's correct that. We're going to select the barrel, press Shift-H, that will hide everything but the barrel. And we will add some edges. So we're going to use another tool here called Add Loop. It was introduced in Moto 501. So if you have Moto 401 or 402, you will probably not have. <coughs> excuse me. You will probably not have this this tool, but you can uh, you can use loop slice by using one segment. <coughs> excuse me. Let me uh, get a drink. So you can uh, <coughs> you can use uh, loop slice by adding one segment and the mode to free. I'm going to use this one because it's a lot faster. So I'm going to add a few polygons, a few edges here that will help sharpen up the edges, <coughs> the sharp edges of our barrel. So first of all I'm going to exit the, the subdivision mode and I'll start adding my edges. So I want one edge here and I want the same edge at the bottom. I'm just going to hold down shift to reactivate the tool. And let's see what's going on now. So now we're getting a sharper result, but we need to add the same edge on the inside. So we will add the same edge on the inside. Okay, and we will add another one in here. And that should be fine for now. Let's repeat the process on the bottom. <coughs> okay, and one more around there. Okay. But our barrel is still not looking barrel like. And you can also see that the rings don't really match. So, First, before we do any modification to the rings, let's add some more detail to our barrel. So we're going to hide everything else. And now, <coughs> excuse me, having a sore throat. And now on the x axis, I'm going to select the direction that then select loop. And then invert the selection and delete. Let me just check something out really quick. Okay. And now we're only left with one strip. Well, this strip is going to become our plank. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to duplicate these edges. <coughs> excuse me, to add some thickness to our plank. 
So we're going to select these edges and these edges on this other side. <coughs> Okay, and we're going to press Z for Edge Extend. Okay, then drop the tool, press W to move. We're actually going to Vertex Mode, and we're going to zoom here on these vertices. So just select those vertices and press Shift A. Okay, sorry, had a call that I had to take. So, select those edges. Click, uh, oh, we already clicked Z, and now we're going to move these edges right there till they match up with this edge, roughly. Okay, and I think we also need to scale this. So we need to scale it on the Z. I really need to go in here to be able to see. So on the Z, around 99.75. Okay, drop the tool. Go back to shaded. Click Z again and drag it in. Or actually, uh, instead of doing all this work, what we can do is we can select these polygons and go to Thicken, and we're going to thicken this. Okay, so we're going to thicken it. But Okay. We seem to have I think yeah we have double edges there, so I'm going to go to polyfy uh to polygon. We have two edges there, so I'm going to use polygon reduce unify force unify and that didn't fix it. <coughs> But what we can do, I think we can use the merge tool. Okay, and now we're left with this. We can delete these. Okay, and we can use thicken now. So we can thicken this, but we're not going to thicken it too much. We're going to thicken it around that much. Okay, and now we're going to delete the inside. Now even though barrels are not constructed this way it will actually be to our advantage in 3D. So usually what, what how barrels are constructed like uh, the plank would end right about here and then uh, the inset would, would come right there but in my experiments this was uh, I was not getting a very good result so that's why we're doing it like this. Okay, so now we need to fix this problem here. We're going to fix it by dragging that down. 
around there and now we're going to remove that polygon we're going to repeat the process on the bottom Some reason. Okay, sometimes Moto has an error that displays polygon slip, although they're not. Okay, so we're gonna need to go to the left, sorry, to the front. Okay, and we need to fix this a little bit. So we're going to move this one up and leave it like that. We're going to move this one down, trying to maintain the thickness. All over. Okay, and top seems to be okay. So now if we smooth this you're going to see that again we're not getting what we want. So we're going to add two more edges in here using the symmetry. Okay and we're going to add one edge <coughs> on the inside just like that. Okay, and now we need to make sure this is in line with the other polygons. Okay, let's see on the top here. Initially, when I did this, I did it the other way around. Like I said, like barrels were where uh, when, how they are originally constructed but uh, the result that I was getting wasn't that good okay and I found out that by using this method the result is pretty decent okay so now I'm going to delete that edge right there. Uh, now we're basically we're, we're getting rid of everything that won't be seen and doesn't interest us because it will help us when we're going to unwrap this. Okay, so I'm trying to further straighten those out. Oh. Okay, even if it's probably we're going to modify them later. Okay, so now we have something like that. Now the rings here, if you can see, are a bit inward at the top, I think. Well, actually, no, they're okay. But these on the middle need to be a bit more in. So I'm going to scale them a bit on the X and Z. To just about that. Doesn't really matter. Okay. So now we're going to unhide, uh, to hide everything else. We're going to set our action center to origin. And we're going to use radial array. And remember when we did the, the segments, make sure you check merge verticals off. Uh, when we did 
the cylinder we selected 30 segments so we're going to select the same here but apparently uh, we need to select 30 okay the start angle was messed up okay so that looks quite nice but I'm feeling that we need more sharpness in here <coughs> so I'm going to add two, po two uh, edge loops like that to get something sharp going on okay now I'm going to do my radial array on the Y and of course this looks a lot more like a barrel now as you can probably see okay so now with the barrel done what we're going to do is we're going to create some basic UVs so I'm going to save my scene do uh, please save if you haven't done so already okay let me delete this so we're gonna go in here in the UV maps we're going to delete the default one and we're going to create two new maps we're going to create one for the planks and we're going to create one for the caps so we're gonna start with the caps because they're the most easiest so we're going to select the caps hide everything else we're going to select the caps and we're gonna go to top Say top, and we're going to uh, either project from view or unwrap or anything else. So I'm going to use unwrap because that will give us the option to modify to add more um, differences between these two since they will be sharing the same UV space. So we're going to fit UVs, select this one fit UVs and we will rotate this one a bit okay save again and now our top and bottom is done we can then unhide the barrel okay and we can start working on the, the planks now on the planks we're going to get, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to um, delete the other planks and just unwrap one. Okay, so delete the other planks, unwrap one and then clone it. So let's just try the unwrap tool and this does a pretty good job. So we're going to leave it like this but we're going to check distortion and we have a bit of distortion but not too much so I'm going to use the relax okay now you see we're getting some of the polygons okay we need to do undo a couple of steps because we accidentally deleted the caps along with the other planks okay so we have the caps and now the planks right so unwrap again and we're going to choose to relax just that And either way, it, it doesn't really matter. We can have some stretching <coughs> going in there. I'm not going to go into too much detail with unwrapping. So I'm going to leave it like that. And then I'm going to use radial array again on the Y. Make sure my center is set to zero. Okay. And now our planks will share the same UV. Now, 
excuse me if we leave it like this uh, when we are going to add our texture map it's going to look very very odd so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with this plank <coughs> and work to the right and we're going to lay them out like this so we're going to do this for each individual plank okay till we have them all lined up now this is going to be a boring process so I'm going to pause the video and I will resume once I'm done okay so I'm done but I kind of forgot to mention something another thing that we could have done to make this a lot a lot faster is click pack UVs and click OK and it was gonna separate them for us now it's no it's not really a big problem only took like one minute to do it so I'm gonna move this out a little okay so now they are they are arranged in that manner and we can save our scene and we can move on to texturing so for texturing we're going to use some textures now the textures I cannot provide them in the source files of the tutorial because uh, they're taken from cgtextures.com so you can go over to cgtextures.com get these textures I'm going to show you I'm going to show you the textures so you can have an idea how they look like so we have a wood texture a rust texture a metal bear texture and some floor texture which is tileable so we're gonna go in here to this scene and we're going to add a new mesh we're gonna call it floor okay we're gonna go to the top and we're going to create a floor. I'm going to center it. Now I'm going to go to my barrel. I'm going to make sure it's sitting on the floor. Okay. And rendering one barrel is not such an interesting idea. So what we're going to do, we're going to instance this a couple of times. So we're going to instance it, say, uh, three or four times and one more time okay so we have five barrels now and now we need to set these instances uh, away from our barrel so in item mode I'm going to select the first ist instance I'm going to move it around there I'm going to rotate it a bit so it's a bit different from the barrel the original barrel and I move this one here rotate this one a bit this one here and rotate this one a bit and now this one what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the left and we're going to flatten it on the floor so we're going to rotate it 90 degrees on the X make sure it's sitting on the floor and then we're going to fix the position in the top Okay, and now we can go over to our camera and set a camera angle, kind of like that. And I also like to modify my camera focal length. So for this scene, we're going to be using a kind of zoomed in lens, 65 millimeters. Okay, and just position the camera. Okay, next one I'm going to do is I'm going to set my frame. It's going to be 956 by 400. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, okay, and make sure I center my barrels. And next one I'm going to do is go over to the render tab. Okay, so the render tab is pretty simple. We have the preview render, the camera, and next we have the perspective here. So first let's start by positioning our directional light now I want the light to come over from the left 
of the camera. Kind of like that. And I want I want it to have an orangish light like that. And the radiant extent is going to be 3.2. Next we want to have some spread on it, maybe 2 2.5. Okay, we need to up the samples so we get less noise. And next we're going to select the environment. We're going to give it a neutral gray color of 0.85. And we're going to go to the render and enable global illumination. And we're going to set our ambient intensity to zero. Now, we don't have any materials at the moment. We just have the base material. So we're going to set the diffuse amount to 100%, specular amount to zero. And now we can tweak the light because you can see we're getting a pretty bright image. So we're going to lower the intensity to 2.5 and the environment intensity to 0.85. OK. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to add some materials. So we're going to select our barrel. Make sure you drag these under the barrel. So in case we decide to move the barrel, they will all move with it. But make sure you're in item mode. So we're going to add some materials. So we're going to add material for the floor, pressing M on the keyboard with the floor selected. We're going to add a floor material. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to select the barrel and we're going to, whoops, selected the wrong polygon there. We're going to select the rings, call this rings, hide it. Next, we're going to select the caps, call it caps, hide it. And then we're going to select the planks and call it planks. And unhide everything. So now let's get into texturing. What we're going to do first, we're going to texture the floor. So we're going to actually we're going to leave the floor to last. So we're going to texture the caps. Now the caps are going to go in here and we're going to drag this wood rough material. We're going to drag it in here, and we're going to first of all, uh, since we're going we're working with a 2.2 gamma, we need to gamma correct the image. That will be uh, dividing this one, dividing it by 2.2, and we get uh, 0 0.4546. Okay, so the uh, turn off anti-aliasing for this image. And now we need to make sure that this image is using the correct UV map. So we're going to change this to caps till we have uh, the image here. And I think it's looking pretty OK. If you're not happy with it, you can always go in here and make it bigger. I'm going to make mine like that. OK, so we have the caps. And we're going to duplicate this image, set it to bump. Okay, and the material here, we're going to change to 100% diffuse. Uh, no specular. We're going to add just a tiny bit of a reflection, even though that would, wouldn't would probably have reflection, but it's good for the scene, for the aesthetics. So we're going to add 0.5 reflection with 10% for now. And the bump amplitude is OK at 5 millimeters, although the bump is scene dependent. So if your, your model is a bit bigger, uh, you might have to increase that. So my, my uh, model is OK. Now we're going to do the same thing for the caps, but we're just going to duplicate these two. Okay, but make sure they are using the correct UV map. So select that to planks. Okay, go over to UV. And at the moment, the, 
the the planks are a bit too the, the texture is falling a bit too big so what we're going to do we're going to scale these up to make the texture smaller so I'm going to scale up until I get something something like that okay it's looking good okay let's see okay now we need to turn off the specular on this one we're going to add the same thing oh I forgot to take conserve energy Okay, so 0.5 reflection, 10% Fresnel, or what you can do, you can right click this material, copy, then go in here and paste, and it will paste the exact settings. Okay, now for the rings. Now the rings material is going to be a bit complicated. So we're going to drag the rust and the metal barrel, uh, the metal bare texture. We're going to drag them both in here. Okay, so we're going to have the rust, uh, the, the metal bear on the bottom, and the rust on, on the top. So we're going to select the rust texture, press Ctrl G, that will create a group. And we're going to add a material for that group. Okay, and we need to gamma correct these images. Okay, and duplicate them and setting them to bump. Okay, and we're also going to set the mapping type to be box okay let's hide this group by pressing that I there to see the metal and it's okay now we need to customize each, each material so for the rust we're going to have 100% diffuse conserve energy we're not going to have any specular or reflection now for the metal material we just hide that group. We're going to have again 100% diffuse, conserve energy, no specular. We will have reflection to 3, Fresnel to 20, blurry ref reflection on with roughness set to 5, and the race to 64. And now what we're going to do, we're going to unhide the rust. We're going to go to add layer, enhance photo textures, noise, and we're going to use crudy, I think. And we're going to change the size to something small, like 100 millimeters. And we want it to be bigger on the X and Z. So we're going to shorten this to 20 millimeters. And probably can get a bit bigger. Okay, and we're going to set this to group mask. You can find group mask under shader control group mask. And we need to invert it. So what's that going to do? Uh, what what that does is basically it doesn't let all the color of the rust through. Okay, and we can increase the uh, contrast here by, well, actually by lowering a foreground value to say 70% and that will let more rust through but I'm going to leave it at 90% and the foreground value to 10 and that's gonna give us a bit of rust coming through this and we're going to change the opacity to 85% ok 
Okay, and so we have a bit of a, a more uh, rusty look, maybe. Mighty. Okay, and we're going to rename this group to Rust, and we're just going to leave it like that. Now we have the rings done, and next we're going to do the floor. So we're going to get this floor here, I'll drag it into Moto. Okay, we're going to gamma correct it. 0.4546 disable anti-aliasing and I want it to be planar on the Y and at the moment it's a bit too small so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it bigger by changing the size here so I'm gonna change it to 2 meters and 2 meters seems to be okay next I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to set this to displacement I'm going to invert it. Now I'm inverting it because from my previous test uh, the, the displacement was actually inverted. Okay, so we're going to leave it like this. Now we're going to change a few render settings and also in the environment I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add a tiny bit of blue tint to the environment. Okay, and now the render settings. I've set my frame already. I'm going to go here to settings and I'm going to change my anti aliasing to 16, my filter to Mitchell, my refinement shading rate is going to be, uh, let's say, 0.15. Okay, my rate threshold is going to be 0.05. My global illumination, I'm going to change this to 300 rays, and the bounces I'm going to leave to 1. Make sure you have ambient intensity set to 0. Okay, and that's about it for the render settings. And another thing that we need to do is we need to go in here to the base shader, and I'm going to change the shading rate to something like 0.85. Now, before we render, I want to say that these settings are not uh, standard so this, these settings might not work well for your scene or for uh, another scene these settings are based on my tests and this will give us uh, a pretty decent result now another thing that we need to do is I'm going to use a few render outputs because I will post process this image so I'm going to use the alpha I'm going to duplicate it even though I'm not going to use the alpha I'm, I need to leave it uh, in there so I'm going to use I'm going to duplicate the alpha and I'm going to change this to depth okay and we can see the depth output in here I'm going to change the max depth to 20 meters then I'm going to duplicate this again I'm going to change it to ambient occlusion I'm going to change the occlusion range to 250 millimeters and the occlusion range uh, raise to 256 and let's see I think this is it for yes for the render outputs one thing we forgot to do is we're going to add a new layer to processing occlusion okay and you can see the occlusion it's going to be uniform so mode uniform spread angle 75 or that's what I like to use between uh, 60 65 and 75. The occlusion distance is going to be 150 millimeters and we're going to multiply this over all our shaders with an opacity of 50 percent. Okay and that's it for the render settings and the render outputs. Now we're going to render this. Hopefully it will not take too long. Right now it's calculating the, the geometry that's using to, to displace the floor. And I'm going to pause the video and I will resume once it's done. But as you can see, it won't take that long. Okay, so it's, it's done rendering. It took 1 minute and 52 seconds. Now if you're using Photoshop, uh, you can save layered image right here. And you can name it, and it will automatically put all the render outputs in the layered image. If you don't have Photoshop and you want to save individual images, you can just switch between them in here and 
use save image. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned.